So if you've been watching the Skincare 101 series so far, you will have the perfect foundations in place. Now it's time to have fun with active ingredients. So I think a lot of people, when they think about active ingredients, the group they think about first are the acids, which might sound a little scary, but ultimately are a really sound place to start. Now, the acids you're thinking about right now are not the same ones I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about azelaic acid. Now, for me, this is something of the underdog of the skincare world. I have been going on about it for years, quite literally, but it has literally taken years for it to get to the place where it's actually now something that people are Googling and are interested in. And I cannot believe it's taken this long, but however, we're here. And I'm so, so grateful because I think of it as literally being a safe pair of hands. The reason for that is its utter versatility. There is almost no one who will not benefit from this particular acid. So today, let's get into azelaic acid, why I think it's my acid with extra and why you might want to think about building it into your routine. And do make sure that you stay right to the end because I'll be sharing my tips and tricks of how to get the most out of azelaic acid in your skincare routine so you can get maximum results. So if you're new to skincare, you might be wondering what azelaic acid actually is. So reassuringly, it is a dicarboxylic acid which occurs in nature. We find it in grains and it's also produced by one of the members of our microbiome, the bacteria that live in our skin, naturally. And when a molecule is natural, more often than not, it does lots of things in the skin. And I think that's why we find this to be such a versatile and effective active ingredient. It has an impact on lots of different pathways in our skin that when they go wrong, contribute to problems. So for instance, it's anti-inflammatory. That means it's helpful in both redness prone skin with rosacea and acne. It's an antioxidant, so that means it's powerful in helping maintain our skin's health and good condition. And it has impact on the pigmentation pathway, so that means it's excellent in treating melasma and also in helping with the dark marks that follow problems such as acne. It's also incredibly safe. So we're gonna get into it a little bit deeper now with each of those individual conditions. You can see where it might have benefits for you. Now, azelaic acid is available over the counter, but also on prescription. So given its prescription uses, I'll talk about those first. So firstly, we see azelaic acid being used for the treatment of acne and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. Now on prescription, that means we're looking at azelaic acid 20%, but it's effective at helping those issues at a lower percentage. And I think that anything from 5% upwards is helpful. So how does it help with acne? Well, it has this anti-inflammatory effect, as I said, so it dials down the skin's tendency to react to things. But it, importantly, it also impacts on the process of keratinization. Now that's a big long word that basically tells us how the skin cells differentiate as they head towards the surface. So by the time they get from the bottom of the top layer of the skin, the epidermis, to the outermost part called the stratum corneum, those cells have lost their nucleus, that's where the genetic DNA material is kept, and they become a nucleate, but they have become specialized at creating our skin barrier, that complex and highly effective structure that keeps bad stuff out and the good stuff in. So in acne, what we find is that around the pores, which is basically the tube connecting the oil gland to the surface of the skin, those dead skin cells do not exfoliate smoothly. They tend to clump up and they're attracted to each other. And they form what are called microcomedones, which are tiny little blockages that become comedones that we might actually be able to see with the naked eye. So on the nose, they tend to be open to the air and they get oxidized. Those are called blackheads or open comedones. And oftentimes along the jawline, that kind of pattern we get with stubborn hormonal type acne, you get what we call closed comedones where they're not open to the air and they look skin colored, but you see them often when the light is kind of hitting the face from the side. Um, and those little blockages are precursors potentially 
for actual inflammatory spots down the line. So when it comes to a successful approach to tackling breakouts in acne, we want to target both, both the inflamed spots that you might have in the here and now that probably cause you the most stress, but also preventing them by unclogging the, the follicles and allowing everything to basically function smoothly. So that is why azelaic acid is such a winner. It does both. And within the acne space where we have dark marks because inflammation can lead to increased pigmentation with too much melanin in the skin as a consequence of that inflammatory process, azelaic acid also helps with that part of the puzzle as well. And when I see patients, you know, oftentimes they get better quite quickly in terms of the unclogging and the tackling of the red marks and the red spots, but it's the dark marks that persist that almost cause as much distress. So it's very reassuring to have an active ingredient that literally hits all parts of the pathway effectively. So that's why azelaic acid is often like a real backbone of any acne treatment uh, pathway that I put together for patients, because not only is it good for treating active disease, it's really powerful in both tackling um, the pigmentation marks that follow, but it's also really good for prevention. So in my mind, there has to be quite a good reason not to have azelaic acid in the mix when we're trying to keep breakouts under control. So then moving on to the next indication on prescription for azelaic acid. And again, we can kind of extrapolate that if it's good for those who have a condition severe enough to be using a prescription item, we will still get benefits even if our skin is not that severe. Um, and for a lot of us, you know, one in 10 people have the genes for rosacea, which is the next indication for azelaic acid. So 15% azelaic acid, what's known as finacea, is indicated for rosacea. And when you think about rosacea, it's a complex disease. There are multiple facets to it. So for some, it's just about a long flush. I say just, it's obviously quite debilitating. It can be problematic. Um, and then that can go on to develop into what we call papular pustular rosacea, where it's associated typically with mid-face red bumps and white heads that look a bit like acne, but are quite distinct. There doesn't tend to be any comedonal process. That's really one of the hallmarks to differentiate acne from rosacea. And then we can go on to other types of rosacea, you know, phimatous rosacea with thickening of the skin and fibrosis and also ocular rosacea as well. But for the commoner types, which is the erythematelangiotatic rosacea, and for those who've got papular pustular rosacea, azelaic acid is a great ingredient because it really helps dial down the skin's tendency to become inflamed largely through provocation with things like the environment, so too much UV can precipitate rosacea flare, challenges in terms of temperature, if you're cold outside coming into a hot room, that can trigger a flush. So these are the ways that just this overly enthusiastic and infl inflammatory response to our environment can, can cause problems. And azelaic acid just tends to dampen it all down. It um, interacts with something called toll-like receptors, which really are these kind of little receptors just sitting there waiting to be triggered to tell you that, you know, there's something alarming going on in the world outside, but they go off prematurely. I always liken it to the fire alarm going off in the kitchen when the kettle boils rather than when the oven is on fire. So we want to make them less sensitive and that's what azelaic acid does. Now, when you think about it, we've talked about acne, we've talked about rosacea, the reassuring part is that these ingredients are suitable for treating probably one of the most sensitive skin disorders that we have. And I think that's why I've always been so passionate about people having greater access to it. This shouldn't be something that's kept tucked away on prescription because it's so beneficial. And I find it to be so much more beneficial than the other simpler alpha hydroxy acids, even probably than beta hydroxy acids, because it's got this complexity. It does lots of things. And at the end of the day, I personally, and I think for my patients, want to be able to access as many benefits with as few ingredients as possible, um, because that is the route to consistency, it's the route to tolerability. We don't want to use more active ingredients than we really have to. Um, and who doesn't want a simple life? If we can have one active ingredient that does lots of things, that's far better than using three or four different ones, because they only do one thing each. So. 
I think, as I say, it's very reassuring that we can use this in rosacea. But we can also use azelaic acid in perioral dermatitis. That's the other finicky, fickle, tricky condition characterized by blemishes around the nose and mouth, typically in that kind of nose to mouth line. And then sometimes it kind of pops down underneath in that little triangle of doom. Distinct from acne and rosacea because you get these monomorphic, meaning they all look the same, little bumps that tend to get a bit red and flaky on the surface and are more often than not triggered by something in your skincare. So any number of ingredients can trigger perioral dermatitis. And the simplest way to work out which of your products, which of course contain you know, many, many different ingredients, is the trigger, is by painstakingly rebuilding your routine one product at a time to ensure that you've isolated where the culprit ingredient might lie. Now, perioral dermatitis is a, an entity that sits somewhere between rosacea and acne with its own distinct genetics. So it's not just about what you're using. There is an inherent predisposition in individuals who suffer from this condition. But practically, I find that that approach to products is streamlining everything, getting rid of any provocative new ingredients in particular that you might have introduced recently. And it's a time when you can think about azelaic acid as uh, a tamer, a calmer, uh, an ingredient that helps restore some balance and order, and I think can definitely help with reducing the risk of flares in the future as well. So I hope I'm helping paint a picture that shows how versatile azelaic acid is. So whilst you might not have full-blown rosacea or you might only get the occasional breakout before your period, you can see that this is something that has the potential to deal with most of the minor irritations that we kind of suffer with when it comes to our skin. So coming on then to pigmentation, like another big bucket of things that tend to be a bother for a lot of people, particularly as we get older, particularly if you haven't been as diligent with SPF in, in your younger years as you, you know, ideally might have been, but hey, we are where we are. So azelaic acid has the ability to turn down overactivity in pigment cells called melanocytes. So in many instances, the skin produces more melanin. Sometimes it's a protective thing. Other times it's um, an abnormal reaction to UV. So for example, with melasma, we get too much melanin being produced. Um, and azelaic acid has the ability to turn down the critical enzyme, it's called tyrosinase. That is part of why the skin pumps out more melanin than ideally it should in some instances. Um, and that can be really helpful in everything from just somebody who has a little bit of light um, sun damage, a few little sunspots or solar lentigos as we call them, right through to somebody who has melasma or indeed post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, which particularly in darker skin tones can lead to more prominent um, unevenness of their skin tone. So really versatile as an ingredient um, and doesn't tend to cause as much irritation, which paradoxically can of course drive the pigmentation pathway as some of the other active ingredients that we do use to treat hyperpigmentation. And that's always the balancing act. Are you getting a solution without actually aggravating that person's skin um, and making them develop more hyperpigmentation as a consequence of that irritation effect? So I find it a very reassuring thing to build into a skincare program. You can also probably see now that if you are prone to a bit of redness and pigmentation, this is an ideal active ingredient because it covers off um, a lot of common scenarios. So it's not uncommon for me to see a patient who's got acne, who's now also got a little bit of redness. Um, guilty, that's my skin tone. And again, it's quite common for someone to be prone to breakouts down here and get melasma up there. So. Azelaic acid is just a lovely ingredient to keep in your back pocket for those types of situations. Now, when it comes to how we use azelaic acid, for a lot of situations, I am going to be combining it with retinoids at night. And retinoids always get that nighttime spot because of the fact that some of them are prone to breaking down under the exposure of ultraviolet light. So it creates a sweet spot for azelaic acid in the morning. But if you are starting out and maybe you just want to venture into using one active ingredient, which is often the smart thing to do, have one variable, 
then you can use azelaic acid twice a day. It's perfectly safe. And in some instances, it's kind of the ideal. Um, if you're somebody who just wants you know, one tube of product, not to fuss and you know, have to worry about combining things, and that can be the way to go. I would say that in most instances, it's beneficial when used all over the skin, because not only is it going to help with those kind of key concerns, but it does also have the ability to brighten. It has antioxidant powers, as I mentioned, and it can improve skin texture as well. So it is a good general purpose active ingredient. So I would encourage you to use it with the 13 dot technique. So you get a nice even distribution, three dots here, three dots here and here. So that's nine, two and two. That way you're not putting too much product in any one spot. And again, I use the fingertip system. So for most people, for a full face, you want to build up to using a fingertip amount. That's a line from the last crease to the end of your fingertip. But to begin with, until you get a sense of how your skin's going to behave with whatever percentage you're using, try a half a fingertip amount. If it seems like that's not gonna go very far, try the 13 dot technique. You'll be pleasantly surprised. It really does help making a small amount go a long way. And with these active products, more is not more, okay? You want to use the right amount for your skin and say less is always the right amount at the beginning and to develop that consistency. If you're using a huge amount too early on, your skin will just get irritated. You'll have to take days off and it becomes very, very hard to build that consistency in. So little, more often, build up the frequency, try using it every other day at the beginning, build up to daily use. That's the way to allow skin to develop tolerance and for you not to have a headache. Now, azelaic acid does play well with other active ingredients. It's another part of its versatility. So if using it with retinoids, unless it's pre-formulated together with your retinoid, like you'll see with Flawless Nightly Serum and also some of the prescription only systems, um, azelaic acid tends to work best in the morning with your retinoid in the nighttime slot. Other active ingredients that it can coexist with, that vitamin C works very well, as does niacinamide, and they can often be used in the morning time routine together. Um, and they tend to have quite a synergistic way of acting. So all three of those products work well together in conjunction with each other. Um, but again, if you have sensitive skin, it's often worth being cautious and building them in one at a time so that you know where you are. Skin tends to prefer that. You tend to be able to recognize when you're at your limitations. So maybe you don't do one of them every day. You know, you get the benefits from doing the three together for synergy, but perhaps use azelaic acid every other day. So it's just finding out what works best for you, but doing that in a consistent way. So I hope I'm painting a picture of this kind, friendly, active ingredient. Um, but if you need any more reassurance, know that we use azelaic acid in both pregnant women and those who are lactating. So again, another box ticked in terms of its versatility and usefulness. My passion for azelaic acid, I think, is coming through at this point. Um, I truly think it's an underrated ingredient. And I think perhaps, you know, there are difficulties when it comes to formulating azelaic acid. That may well be part of why it's taken a long time for it to penetrate into mass market um, availability and to be available in, in, in more products. But, you know, with care and patience, formulations can be um, develop that will work well, that will be elegant and that you can, you know, see the benefits that I see when I prescribe it for patients. Um, and hopefully if you've tried the flawless range, you too will have become convinced that it is an acid that is very much worth your time. So I hope this was useful if you're starting out. It can be daunting building an active-based skincare routine. So I think I'm going to be doing this kind of video for the next few weeks and hopefully it'll help you develop the confidence needed to take that step because it really will lead to you know happiness in your skin I think because I think it's such a useful and versatile ingredient I couldn't be without it myself and I hope that you too can discover the benefits and the joy of using azelaic acid bye for now